Hello everybody and welcome back to the Golang tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be doing is talking about the FMT module, specifically the two methods sprintf and printf. Now pretty much what those are is print a formatted string and pretty well save or create a formatted string. And you've seen this actually before in one of the previous tutorials that I did where I wrote something like fmt.printf and then notice that's because I imported fmt first of all, that's important. I did something like percent %t and then I put a value say like 10 here and maybe you guys can guess what's going to pop up. So let me actually run this from my console down below. But what that does is actually print out the type of this variable. So you see it printed int down in the console there. Uh, but this is what printf allows you to do. So essentially we could write something like hello percent %t, uh, so whatever string we want, and then embed these little formatter things with the percent sign. Put a bunch of variables, we don't just have to put one. In fact, I can put another one here, let's look at what percent %v does, and let's run this. And we get hello int 10. So what percent %v does is actually print the value of the variable. Uh, but the idea being that this is how we format strings and kind of include variables in our output to the console. Now that's what printf does, it prints out this formatted string. And I'll show you what all these little formatters are in just a moment. I have a cheat sheet here that we're going to go through. Uh, but what sprintf does is actually let us store that value in a variable. So we can do something like var x equals or actually var x string equals fmt dot sprintf. And then inside of here, we could put the same thing we had here. And that would simply store whatever this value is, which is hello int 10 inside of this variable x, right? And that, that's the idea behind that. So that is pretty much how the sprintf and printf work. Now let me show you a few formatters and we'll just go through a bunch of examples here. So these are basic uh, type and value. Those are kind of default ones, but let's look at the cheat sheet. So we can see that we start with general. Um, I've already shown you these two. So value and type. The value is just whatever the value of that variable is uh, or the statement that you put there will be printed out. Uh, two percent signs is actually a literal percent sign. So you can't just print a percent sign by doing like percent like that. Uh, sometimes you'll run into an issue if you try to do that. So if you do two percent signs, that will actually make sure you print a percent sign. So that's why we have that. Um, but yeah. All right, let's see if this loads back up. Okay, so for booleans, we have percent %t. What this will do is either print out a true or false value depending on the value of the variable that you actually put in this output. So let's look at an example of percent %t uh, in lowercase. So if I go percent %t, notice that's different than the capital percent %t. And actually, let's just leave the value 10 here and let's take a guess at what's going to happen in the console. So let's look here and see and what is going to happen? We get hello and then whoa, okay, some crazy thing that doesn't seem to make any sense. Why? That's because we cannot format the number 10 as a true or false value. But now if I actually change this to zero and I run this, so go run tutorial.go, what's going to happen here? Same thing, zero doesn't work. So I need to either put a Boolean value here. So something like true. So if we look at true, we can see this, we get hello true. So that's how you format the true or false right now. Of course, you could just like do true as a string if you wanted to do that. But sometimes you want to print out a Boolean. So in that case, you use percent %t and that will format the Boolean appropriately for you. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go down to integer. So integer has a few examples here that essentially let you pick what base you want to show when you print out the integer. So we have percent %b, O, D, and X for 2, 8, 10, and 16. Those are the bases. So binary, octal, uh, base 10 numbering system, so decimal, and then hexadecimal, which is 16. I'll show you some examples of how these work. They're pretty straightforward. Um, we'll just keep leaving, actually, I'll say number like that. And now we'll do percent %b. Let me show you what percent %b of 1024 is. Uh, hopefully, some of you guys can guess what that value is. Actually, let's do 1025 just to make it more interesting. And what am I doing? Let's run down here. So go run tutorial.go and see that this is actually the binary representation of 1025. Now let's just change this like 3435. See what number we get here. Let's have a look. And one zero, whatever, a bunch of this gibberish. Okay, so I'm going to change from binary now to octal, which is O. And let's just have a look at what we get there. We can see that this will be a little bit shorter than previously. So 6553. Nice. Let's go from octal to decimal and see what happens here. We know that this is going to give us actually the same value. 
And finally, let's go to hexadecimal, uh, which was it H? No, it was X, my bad. And let's run that and see what we get. And there we go, we get D6B. Now, something to note here, if you actually want to use capital letters, you can do a capital X and that will use capital letters for this. So you'll see a capital D um, and then B instead of lowercase for when you're doing the hexadecimal formatting. So something like that. Uh, but that's the basics for integers. So again, this stuff is pretty easy. It's just a matter of kind of almost memorizing some of these things or knowing where to look to find. Them. All right. So now we're getting into ones that are a little bit more complicated. We have floating points. So floating points. Um, when we have floating point numbers in computing, sometimes it's hard to represent them and we don't know what precision to use and things like that. So we have to be careful when we're printing them out in what little formatter we want to use. So if we use percent %e, that will actually print it out in scientific notation. So if you have a scientific calculator and you do some crazy math equation with really long numbers, uh, what you'll see is that you get that little e at the end and it shows like e plus 15, which is supposed to be the exponent or like negative 15 or whatever it is, right? Um, that's what this will do. So it'll actually put the little e in there in scientific notation. Now the standard is typically percent %f or uh, capital percent %f. Now this will print the decimal, it just won't print uh, that little e, the exponent, which comes with scientific notation. And then percent %g is actually used for very large exponents to make sure that there's not um, a misrepresentation of them when we print them out. Now I'll show you an example of all of these right now so you understand how they are. So let's actually change this to, what was this? I gotta look here so I don't forget, percent %e. And let's just do something like 2.3 and, and a bunch of random digits and see what we end up getting here. So let's run that go down here and we can see that our output is 2.37637 e plus 00 right so if you understand scientific notation you'll understand why or what that means let's shorten this a bit and see if we get something different let's have a look we get plus 00, zero again so i don't know the, all the scientific notation stuff that and how that works but that's what that does for you so i figured i'd show it to you uh and now let's do decimal no exponent so if i do percent f like that and notice that percent f and percent capital f actually do the same thing so it doesn't matter which one you use there we just actually just get the representation of the number but notice it cuts off after a few digits uh, because it can't represent these last ones that we're trying to show here so if we actually want to make sure that we're showing all of these we have to talk about something called width and precision which i will tell you in a second okay so that's percent f but now let's look at percent g and see if this will show us the whole thing so let's have a run down here go run tutorial.go and notice that shows us all of that so when we're dealing with large exponents or sorry large decimals which this would be then we need to use something like percent %g to represent that whole number so that is kind of the trick there okay so that was floating points we'll talk about width and precision in a second but let's get through strings so when we want to format strings we can use percent %s or percent %q uh, this one's pretty straightforward so if i make a string say oops I always do this uh, let's say like tim here and I change this to percent %s, what this will do is just print out Tim. It'll just take Tim and say number, colon, Tim. Let's look at it. Down here, we get number, colon, Tim. Now, if I change this to Q, which is actually the other one for string, so this is a double-coded string, what this will do is print out Tim, but it will include the double quotation marks in the output. So let's have a look here. Go run tutorial.go. We get number and then Tim surrounded in quotation marks. So that's something that's cool. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier if you actually want to quote something. Cause here I can't just like put quotations around the queue. Um, there's going to be an issue with that. Okay. So now that we did that, uh, let's wait for this to load up here. Let's talk about width and precision. So sometimes we actually want to pad our strings so that there's a certain length. So say we're printing like five or six different things. We want them all to be centered or in the same area. So what we can use is padding. Now, these two sections really should probably be the same because they're they're very similar. But the idea is that when we want to make a string or something a certain length, we simply precede the formatting um, character here with some number that says how long we want it to be. So in this case, this will be the default width and default precision because we just put percent %f, which is for floating point numbers. But if we put percent %9f, this will make it 9 wide. So from the left side of the screen, it will make sure that it's nine wide characters. And it will do that by simply padding the front of our string with spaces. So an example would be something like this. If I had like Tim and I wanted it to be nine wide, then I would add one, two, three, four, five, six, 
uh, spaces, then I would add Tim, which would make this nine wide. That's what the padding means, assuming I did the correct amount of spaces. So that's what that means. Uh, now we'll talk about precision. So if you do a dot followed by some number preceding the format character here, what that means is we're going to make this precision two. So essentially round to two decimal points. If you just put a dot, that means just round that number off to a whole number. So don't include the decimal points. And if you do a number and then dot some precision F, that's going to pad it to that width with precision of this um, for whatever that formatting character is. Okay, so let's just have a look at an example here. So let me get rid of that. And what I'm going to show you now is if I do something like say 9Q, doesn't matter if this is F or not, and I put Tim, what this is going to do is pad Tim to be length 9. So let's actually see how that works. So if I run this, we get, let's see, number Tim. And you see that it actually made it 9 wide, or made it, yeah, 9 wide from the left-hand side. Now, if I wanted to make it uh, justified on the other side, so let's say I said number uh, blank is cool or something like that. I know this doesn't make any sense, but if I make this a negative 9, what this will do is make it left justified. So it will be padded from the other side. So let's look at this and see what we get number tim is cool notice the spaces are here not on the other side now let's have a look at floating points because i wanted to show you the precision so let's say we have a long um floating point number something like that we want to round it off to two decimal points i could do something like dot 2f uh or sorry yeah dot 2f i think that's actually it and this will round this to two decimal points so let's have a look uh if i can get down here let's run go tutorial.go and we see 3.46 is cool so we just rounded it off notice that this is five but it rounded to six and then if i just do dot f let's see what that does and we get three is cool so it just rounds it actually to the whole number so those are pretty much all the things i want to show you now the last thing i guess is that we can use this zero so uh that will mean that we can actually pad with a digit so if i change this to say like zero d um, and I say like 070, what this is going to do is actually pad with the digit zero uh, to length seven. So if I change this to say like 45, let's have a look at what this does here. We should notice that we pad with the digit zero. So we can see that we do that padding, but we fill with zeros instead of spaces. Yeah, so that is um, pretty much it. I mean, I showed you what sprint F does as well. Like, it's pretty straightforward, like var let's just say out string equals and all I have to do is really change this to say sprint instead of print so let's just go s p r i n t f and that will actually just store the value in the variable so I mean I'll show you that there's nothing wrong with doing this but if I decided to uh, out declare to not use okay well <laughs> if I print this out so let's do fmt dot print f or actually let's just print ln and we'll print out like that and we run this then we should see there's no problem and that will actually print out the formatted string so we store it in this variable which means we could use it for something else and then we just print the line out now one last thing to say there's a few special characters that are called escape characters that we can use in our strings the only two i'm going to show you here are backslash n and backslash t backslash n stands for carriage return or new line that's equivalent to hitting enter on your keyboard so what will happen here is this will automatically make a new line so we'll actually just just have a look at it here i guess uh go run tutorial.go and you can see that it breaks and it does that new line in our string now what percent t does is actually a tab so that's a tab character i believe that's just four spaces but if i run this you should notice there'll be more spaces now than there would before and we get that tab and tabbing over so I think with that, that's all I wanted to show you. This has been the FMT module, a little bit about printing and formatting, which are going to come in handy later on. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about scanning and getting user input.